So, hi everybody. Uh, I wanted to look at um, one of the homework problems from the section on index sets, uh, section 1.8, because um, it's a little tricky and I think it also illustrates some of the um, interesting aspects of the different ways in which you can use sets in a problem. Because as we'll see, um, the main role of the set here is going to be in the index, where the interesting part is going to be in the index set rather than in the elements of the set themselves. So uh, let's see where this gets us. So here's the problem. It says, uh, suppose that we have two sets i and j. j is non-empty and j is contained in i. j is a subset of i. And now the question is, is the intersection as A runs over the set I of an indexed set, a set of uh, indexed sets A sub A, automatically a subset of the intersection over A and J of the sets A sub A. So notice that we're not told anything. We know nothing about the sets A, A. They could be anything. And so this is really just a question about, about, the, um, about the index sets. So when you, when you and then there's this uh, word explain. So it's not, fair, not enough to just say yes or no. So when we have a situation like this, the, um, a good way to go about it is to, is to think of an example. So let, let's make it a little bit more concrete. And let's think about the situation where I so i and j are sets, j is not empty, and j is a subset of i. So we need to make a set and then find a subset of it. So let's suppose that a is a very simple set. It's the set with three elements, one, two, and three. And let's suppose that j just consists of one and two. So sure enough, j is not empty, and j is a subset of i. So. Um, these two sets meet the conditions laid out in the, uh, in the problem. So now we're assuming that we have sets A1, A2, and A3. And the left-hand side is the intersection over A in I of A sub A. And that means, because we know what this means, it means A1 intersect A2 intersect A3. Because that's what this symbol means. It means take all the sets corresponding to A's in the set I, that's 1, 2, and 3, and intersect them all together. The intersection for A and J of A sub A is just A1 intersect A2. And the question is, in this particular case, the question is, is A1 intersect A2 intersect A3 a subset of A1 intersect A2. Well, let's think about this a little minute, a little bit. These are the elements. The left-hand side is the collection of X's, so that X is in A1 and X is in A2 and X is in A3. And the right-hand side is the collection of x's so that x is in a1 and x is in a2. And if you write this out like this, you should be able to see pretty clearly that the condition that you're in the left-hand side, that you're an element of the left-hand side, which says that you're in a1 and in a2 and in a3, certainly means that you're in a1 and in a2, right? If you belong to all three of these sets, you certainly belong to two of them. So, therefore, 
A1 intersect A2 intersect A3 is a subset of A1 intersect A2 because the condition to belong to all three of these sets means that in particular you belong to two of them. So what about, I mean, we could work out another example. Maybe we should. Let's look at a case where we have an infinite collection. So let's suppose that i, remember i was the big set. Let's suppose that i is the integers. And j is the even integers. So both of these sets have infinitely many elements. And j is, in fact, a subset of i. And the question is, is the intersection over a in z of a sub a a subset of the intersection over a in j, which is the even integers of a sub a? Well, again, the left-hand side is, I'll write it out like this, a minus 3 intersect a minus 2 intersect a minus 1 intersect a 0 intersect a 1 and so on. It's the set of elements so that x is in a n for every n in z. And the right-hand side is a minus 4 intersect a minus 2 intersect a 0 intersect a 2 intersect a 4. It's the collection of x so that x is in a n for every even n in z. And once again, if you are in a n for every n in z, you're certainly in every a n for every even n in z. Belonging to every a n for n in z forces you to belong to every a n for n in z and n even. So one way you can think about this is that there's a collection of tests. If you want to decide if a belongs to this intersection, you have to ask, well, is, is a in a minus 4? Is a in a minus 3? Is a in a minus 2? Is a in a minus 1? Infinitely many often for all the integers. So there's like all the tests here correspond to the integers. On the right hand side, Again, there's infinitely many tests, but they only correspond to the even integers. If you pass the test for all integers, you're certainly going to pass the test for all even integers. And that's why this side is a subset of that side. So in the general case, if x it belongs to a sub a for every a in i, then since j is a subset of i, x belongs to a sub a for every a in j, because j is contained in i. And therefore, the intersection over a in i of a sub a is in fact contained in the intersection of a and j. And if you want to think about it in terms of tests, the point is here to, to get into this set, you have to pass the test. Are you in a sub a, big A sub little a for every single little a and i? And if you pass that test for every little, here's, here's a picture. Here's i. Sitting inside it is j. If you pass the test for every single element of i, 
then in particular you pass the test for every single element of J. And therefore, if you, if you pass the tests to get into this set, you automatically pass the tests to get into that set. So I hope uh, that helps clear that up. As always, if you have any questions or if this uh, needs more clarification, I'll look for you on Piazza.